come here often not only to see Lewis's books and the books that he refers to, but I also like to see the books that he references. For example, here's one. In Surprised by Joy, he said he read Don Juan by Lord Byron, and he manfully struggled to the very end, and when he was finished, he wrote, Never Again, and it's right here in this book. And so he references it in Surprised by Joy. You'll find it in the Wade Center. It's remarkable to me. And, and then also, um, he talks in The Abolition of Man, one of his, three, his own personal three favorite books, about receiving a book that he was asked to review. If he gave it a positive review, I don't know if it would have been as positively received as a review from Oprah, but it would have meant that there would have been a few more sales because Lewis wrote a review of it or something like that. He was horrified by the book. And when he wrote the review, he didn't refer to the actual book because he didn't want to embarrass the authors. That would be like Lewis. So he refers to it as the green book, and he refers to the authors as Gaius and Titius. You come to the Wade Center, they have his copy of the green book, The Control of Language by Alec King and Martin Ketley. And Lewis is saying, we don't, in The Abolition of Man, we don't often pay enough attention to assumptions that are embedded in books. That's as relevant as you can get in today's news as people are talking about what's being embedded in students' books. But also the postmodernists, as they wrote, they say, you'll see books written from a point of view, maybe there's a power differential or something. We need to deconstruct books. Lewis was deconstructing before there were postmodernists. And what he's concerned about in this book is that there's an assumption about the nature of statements that are said that take us far from truth. In essence, if I was gonna distill it down, Lewis argues that truth is not reality. Truth is what I think about reality when I think accurately about it. You have to have something real to validate a truth. This is a pen that's true because there's an objective reality here that validates the statement. This is an elephant that's false. Elephants exist, this isn't one. And you can do the same thing with uh, things that are not merely empirically perceived, but ideas, the realm of ideas. You, you can set aside an idea by definition. You can reason about it in an inferentially coherent way. Alec King and Martin Ketley in their book are saying no. Basically, they're not even aware, I think, that they're doing it. They're basically being very subjectivistic. What I think, what I feel, what I decide will be morally responsible, I can just do because it doesn't have to have an objective reality that validates it. And he talks about this idea of the Tao. He gives it a definition, the Tao. He uses an Eastern word, I think, because he wants to show this is not a Western concept only. He says the Tao is the doctrine of objective value, the belief that certain things are really true and others really false, the kind of thing we are and the kind of thing the universe is. This is the book he was writing about. You can come to the Wade Center and see it right here.